saw my fan. Oh, we just recently got a fan. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Lori. Happy I love Monday. that you start every show with your fake, with your <laughs> cigarette. I just like to have something in my hand, you know, like an accessory or something like that. So you're like Mad Men era. That's what I, yes. And that was a great show, by the way. I really enjoyed Mad Men. Um, love, love me yeah. some John, John Hamm. Oh my God. <laughs> He's fantastic. Why is he so hot? Mm. Did you see him in Bridesmaids? Yes. No. The <laughs> opening scene. I was like, He's like you. Oh, but then when they're she's driving down the he's driving down the street and they get in a fight and he's like you're no longer my number three. <laughs> such a jerk. Hi everybody. Yeah, he was such a jerk. Hello, Hello friends. Germany. Hello Australia. Willem it's we seven a.m. last week. Hi Corinne. Hello Willem. Everyone, good morning. Tuesday here in Australia, seven a.m. Tracy. She's living Good day, in the future. Mate. Mm, I love that. Let's throw another shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jeffrey. That was How a bad joke. You? Hi, Carmen. Oh, Leanne, I clicked the wrong thing. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Carmen. Hello, Leanne's Samantha. just up the highway from me. It's like mm, uh, she really four Is four tiny? hours away. Still in when still in Texas. Here? How far Maybe is it David. from one side of Texas to the next? Well, from Houston to Lubbock, where my son goes to school, it is nine hours. So that is from Houston, which is on the East Coast, or yeah, the yeah. east of Texas at the Gulf, to Lubbock, which is the bottom part of the panhandle, that is nine hours. So it's nine hours almost across. I want to say from... El Paso to Houston, 12 hours. That's just that a is guess, but I crazy. think it's 12 hours. I can drive yeah, from here like to day's in nine hours, like go through several states. I can drive from here to DC in eight hours. I mean, Massachusetts is tiny. You'll, you can drive four hours and still be in Texas. <laughs> that is nuts. We have another yes, one. Yes, How far are you from, from Central Mass, Leanne? I'm in like um, golf land and apple orchards. That's that's what my town is known for. We have golf um, land. Friends. Wendy Sue. Yes, we have an apple orchard that abuts my property, but there are like four apple orchards in our town. And we have like three golf oh. courses in a Dunkin' wow. Donuts that close down. In a Dunkin'. <laughs> of course. We're very, we're very rural here. <laughs> 801 miles by 773 yeah. miles. Thank you, Jeffrey. That's Thank so you. technical. Yes, can you so get those, can you get that same ratio for Massachusetts? Yeah, I would like to see a comparison. I'm having oh. short man complex right now. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is bigger in Texas. <laughs> oh my goodness. Welcome everybody to the Juicy Broads Pen Show. We are your co-hosts, Lori and Vanessa. Vanessa. Hello. <laughs> Jazz hands, everybody. Jazz hands. This is something me and my sister always bust out into jazz of jazz hands. Mm. I'm from Connecticut, even smaller than Mass. Oh, look at that. Mass 190 by 110. Wow. Small but mighty here in the Bay State. It is small but mighty. Absolutely. Mm. Yes. I have my little Boston mug right there. Hey, Connie. Connie made it. Connie, Connie made it to the show. Here. Connie is the sweetest human. Does she not like respond to every message, say nice things about everybody's post? Yes. She is like the support of all yes. of us. She and she so makes, always makes me feel good about right? what I'm doing. Same. Always. And Thanks I for that, it. Connie. <laughs> <laughs> She's fantastic. So today, what are we talking about, Vanessa? Well, today we'll be talking about our mom Blanc. Is that how you say it? Collection. Mont Blanc Collection. <laughs> My Mont Blanks. <laughs> yes, if you're not savvy enough, your, man, your Mont Blanc Collection. That's what we're today. Um, so this was prompted because Vanessa like snuck in a reel where she was showing her bebe, which she inspired me to buy in a different color. And then there was another, another little addition 
There and was. I, I, I was kind of zoning out. And then she brought it to my attention. I said, wait a second. I saw that reel. Was that Bohem brand new? Was that new to you, Vanessa? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it was. Yes. And it was, it was like completely spur of the moment type of situation. I had seen the Bohem. Is it Bo Bohem? Bohemian. Bo the Bohem. Bohem. Boem, I think. Feel free it's to correct Boem. us in the comments. Boem. So, um, so I saw I was at Drum Goals when Kirk was there, and he had ground one of my nibs. And so, after, you know, after that, I walked around the store and I, I like, I grabbed a bottle of, you know, platinum carbon ink. I was like, why oh, do you need some of that? And I had a few stickers and had the new Caveco um apricot you know i had like a little thing i was gonna get yeah. and i was at the counter where a lot of their pre-owned pens are at and i was just chatting with larry and i looked over at this section that had a bunch of uh, mont blancs and i saw her and i was like is that what i think it is and his, and um, michael actually took it he's like yeah check it out i was like oh my gosh Cause I, the first time I ever saw it, it was like on Instagram and I was like, wow, that is, that is the coolest Mont Blanc ever. And I really want that pen. And this was like maybe a year or two ago, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, that would be a cool pen to have in my collection. And, um, yeah, I got a good deal. I think too. I think you did it. get a good deal. I don't know it's if you want to share, but yeah, I'll um, share. I'll share. Just guys don't, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. And don't don't tell my family because they have no idea what I spent on pens. <laughs> don't tell Mr. Pen Gangsta. Yeah. Just don't tell my kids either, especially the kids, because actually I bought it for her. Oh and yeah. And then I sent it to her in the mail. She didn't spend a dime. I didn't spend a damn thing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so yeah, Kirk was all like, if you don't buy it, I'm buying it. And I was like, but I really want this pen. And I sat there with it in my hand for a bit. And we he inked it up. And I started writing with it and playing with it. And <clears throat> I said, well, it looks like I'm going to have to go put all my stuff back. Because I'm not, you know, this is what's, you know, I can't. I, I could just do this pen. I'm not going to do a, a this is extra a quality, quality this over quantity purchase. Pretty much. Not that the other that's things exactly you were getting were not quality, but you had to like focus in. I pretty much did. And and the cool thing was that they so this old case was there and they threw the case in too with that. Wow. Because it did come with yes. a box. So I got it. I got bought case. that case. I bought I paid a hundred bucks for this case and I thought that was a good deal. Yes. I got it on um Vestaire, but it was for that pen, which I bought in oh, the past and it was fake. I really like it. But it was small like enough it for the baby. Nice. You know what? It's funny. Yes. This would match your baby. I know. And um, this would match your baby. <laughs> <laughs> you want to trade? <laughs> I'll have my people talk to your people. All right. Um, yeah. So but that's yeah, why. So that's oh, what... Yes. Oh, it's you know what this means, right? Vanessa. <laughs> what? what? I'm in trouble. What do you, why are you in trouble? No, it means I'm going to end up buying that pen because I bought it once before and it was a fake on Mercari and I had to send it back. We talked about, I, I just, did a video about yes. the fakes I bought on Mercari. It just blows my mind that there are fake What's pens it? out there. Oh, just for Mont Blanc, I think. Um, although, crazy. I did see um, a Pelican, it was in an M600 on Mercari and someone just wrote in big letters, fake underneath it. And I don't know enough so about they fake Pelican. Pelican. No. Mm -hmm. But definitely that is so crazy. Blanc. Yes, it is the Onyx, Leanne. That is the Onyx. Although when I did a little research about this though, it's not a real stone. Which kind of pissed me off a little bit because I'm like, it's small block. You think I mean it's There's tiny. Synthetic. You can't yes, put a I little totally agree. You put a little onyx in there like a real one. It's like because the one that yeah, I'm trying so, to get I mean that's is fine. Ruby. For my birthstone, I want the ruby, oh, but it's not a ruby. Oh, and so. the black. Uh, but there's the aquamarine. Like, is it an aquamarine? It's a pretty blue stone. It's like a light blue. Yes. Yeah, that that's really pretty. Someone posted theirs earlier today. Um, Fake. 
field notes. What? what? I just I'm saw sorry. that. I was like, <laughs> no, it's fine. No, let's discuss this. I have that what? set. When we went to Acadia National Park, I bought they're broken down into a couple packages. So whichever package had Acadia in it, I purchased for our trip, Willem. So I can't believe they fake those. You're going to have to let me in on that. What? And Jeffrey says, whoops, Lori, I almost bought the same fake pen. I knew it was fake because the gem color was wrong. See, I was a little early in my journey. Oh, so, so, we're, so this is you're trying to get a ruby. Is that what yes, I, I I purchased what I thought was a good deal on Mercari for a Mont Blanc Bowen. Yeah. Um, it was before I got the baby. And I think that's why when I ended up getting the baby, I, I mean, the thing about the Bowen, and you're going to have to speak to this. It's just, it seems impractical, but that's okay because it's, we're collectors and it's beautiful and it's Mont Blanc and I still want it. it so you can let me know how it is. Cause it's like a twisty, maybe you can give us a little here, demonstration. I'll show you a dem this was actually my pen for today anyway, because it's new. So. Oh yeah. Um, I didn't even bring my bags and stuff. I'm going to have to think on my feet when our okay. guests arrive. Okay. We can, we we'll can start talk. just, so, oh, we'll see you like going. Yeah. <laughs> Like grabbing stuff. I'll go downstairs in my thrifted inventory and pull something else out. Um, we do have a, a really, really, really special guest coming today. And I am honestly so excited to speak with him. I don't know if anybody saw my Instagram post. I know Vanessa shared it. Um, but he is an expert, in my opinion, on Mont Blancs. And he Assemble, he takes them apart and reassembles them. You'll see him frequently on um, Virtual Pen Show. He is penlover.medstudent on Instagram. His name is Sid, and I met him in Orlando when I bought my 149 from him. So when Vanessa and I were speaking about tonight's episode and talking about Mont Blancs, I'm, we were saying before the show, like, I hope nobody asks us any questions about the history of Mont Blanc or anything technical. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like... I don't we, have, we have very little information for you. <laughs> Muy pequeño, that's Espanol. <laughs> Un pequeño, sí. Um, <laughs> however, I am hoping, I'm banking on the fact that Sid will have some great details I'm for you. Sure. In fact, the I'm first sure. fake Mont Blanc that I brought, bought on Mercari, I sent to Sid. And like in a nanosecond, he's like, it's fake. I'm so sorry. That was never even made. I don't even know what that is. It's fake. And then it arrived. <laughs> and it it made like a platinum preppy seem like it was luxurious. It was so cheap. And I messaged Mercari. And because I sell online, I get really cranky about fake stuff. And oh, it makes resellers look bad. And, you know, eBay is much better about and, and probably, I'm sure people have bought fakes from eBay as well, but I find yeah. that they are better, at least than Mercari, I would say is the woat. Poshmark wow. is a really close second, like fake Chanel bags, fake Louis Vuitton, <laughs> fake YSL, fake Mont Blanc, it's all really? there. Yeah. So, um, so it's pretty so much. Like, this is fake. This is fake. Like reporting people, I get so mad. So I'm thinking that when, okay, so when you buy a pre, pre-loved. Pre-loved. We loved Mont, Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. um, shouldn't shop at Macari. Well, the one thing I will say is they gave me no problem whatsoever about okay. returning. Well, that, it was like that's cool. instantly like, so that's why, you know, it, it held up my money for a little bit. So that stinks, but I got <laughs> it. I actually, I filmed a video, like, should you buy luxury pens? And I talked, I, I kept the fake one before I sent it back, I filmed a video and I shared the ones that I did have that were real. Yeah. But the way that I look at it as a reseller, I've done this before where I, where I pick up things that I'm 99% sure are fake, but I take them home and I study them and I try to see like how I can authenticate things in the future. Like, Oh, well, you know, the, so for, for a handbag, if the pattern mm -hmm. does not line up, that's usually a, right. a dead giveaway or if the yeah. stitching is off or, you know, yeah. sometimes, or the, you look at the hardware. So there's a lot of things that you can look at. So I like, it's kind of one of my hobbies as a reseller is to research things. So right. I wasn't too afraid. I had a feeling it might not be real, but then I learned some stuff, um, which was, which was good. So I yeah. did send them. Oh, totally. Back. That's a good thing to ask. Yeah. Especially if you do buy um, pre-owned things yeah. to, to know what to look for, especially in bags. I did that because I, 
Um, I, I've bought a lot of secondhand bags actually. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've bought some from mostly my, if I buy anything designer on eBay, it's usually from a Japanese reseller because their stuff usually turns out it's authentic. And, that you can uh, usually feel very confident about. Yeah. They have some really strict laws in Japan about right. selling, you know, fake. So I would agree with you, Vanessa. I think you feel, I feel I purchase from Japan freely. I, I do feel too. Good about it. I'm the same. And yeah, so I have a, a couple of um, resellers on there that I use for any, any pre-owned stuff. So if he was, if they were carrying a Mont Blanc, I would feel comfortable purchasing that because I've seen them uh, sell like Cartier ballpoints and stuff mm. like that. So mm -hmm. um, I have five Mont Blanc pens and not one of them is, oh no, one of them is new. Four of them are pre-owned. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've so got I'm, yeah. Three. I have three Mont Blancs. My Mont Blanc collection is not, not big. Um, that's okay. Do we think they're worth the hype? So we can talk. So our friend Sid is on a train. He is a med student. So we only have him for about a half an hour. So get your questions ready for Sid because he I'm is ready, an expert. Um, but he said, just about to say my train is delayed, but I should be on by 445. He already has the link to sign in with us. So we can we can chat until so we have a solid 30 minutes of chat. I guess in the in the meantime, uh I guess we could discuss if it's worth it. I'm kind of curious if people who are here in the audience, I guess that's what it is. Right? In our studio audience. In the studio audience. In our live studio audience. Yes. Is Mont Blanc worth the hype? What do you guys think? Kate's all of hers are used. So yeah, I'm kind of curious used. about that. Well, what do you... What are your thoughts as, as people come in? Pre-owned, worth it, new, not so much. I agree with I you. I say if you can, yeah. okay, so oh, in my Shayla. opinion, Sorry. Go ahead. what? Oh. I just remembered my baby's new too. My baby and yes. my glacier are new. Baby. So yeah, so I guess it's half and half. So I think like the baby, um, I bought mine new and um my 149 I bought new, but I got a I got a good deal on it, so I couldn't pass mm. it. Um, but I yeah, I think if you could find a decent used 149, because there's so many of them, it's like why not? What kind of what? That's crazy, Wendy Sue. What kind of forty one dollars? That's insane. Um, I bought a wow. 146 new at half price. Writes nicely, but not sure if it's worth the price so far. All of, ooh, Leanne, high roller. All mine were purchased hey. new, but I'm very happy with them. No regrets. Misspelling. No, no regrets. <laughs> That's great. Um, only Mont Blancs I have are vintage generation, which I love for sentimental reasons. I love that. Uh, UT, I bought a 146. Oh, we did that one. Not sure if it's worth the price so far. It's a 32. I'm not familiar with that. That's so exciting. Was, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't mind having a vintage one. I think that would be pretty nice. I have one in Love It, but I don't know that it offers enough of a different writing experience that it would be worth it. I have great characters. I have a great character. So I okay. know. Oh, the line. I know, I know I was paying for the theming. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, I, I keep wanting to bring Leanne's comment back. What do we have <laughs> here? Willem says, aside from the affordability issues, most Montblanc styles don't really appeal to me. For the same cost, I'd rather go Pelican. Okay, that's fair. Because Pelican mm -hmm. is Pelican to me is another brand that is very good. Great nibs. It's totally worth it, in my opinion. Uh, you know, I've had very good experiences with Pelican. Those are really good pens. And so. I only have one Pelican and I no two. I love it. I, I, I can't count friends. <laughs> it's a very mean pen stormy gray blue and all okay um so i would say that there is there is a lore to it and i think for me i was into luxury handbags before i was into pens mm -hmm. so clearly i get a little seduced by the name and i shouldn't so but it's I'm, the brand being honest 
It's okay. the brand. Actually, somebody DM'd me um, when I said, when I, I did a little reel about our show today and I showed my Mont Blancs and they said something like, I thought it was so sweet. I wish I, let me, let me call it up because I won't do it justice. Basically that it makes them feel better when uh-huh. they have it out. It kind of like, he said something like, I'm a, wait, I don't wait, wait, I'm going to read it. Cause it's really okay. good. It's really okay. good. Uh, what did he say to me? Uh, dun, dun. Something to the effect like he's a, I wear pajamas and, oh, here it is. There's okay. your thing. Damn it. I can't find it. He said he wears pajamas in public. He's that kind of a guy. But when he, now that he owns a Mont Blanc, he wears pants that button in public. It was something like that. <laughs> something like that wow and I so love, you feel like he not, just maybe it's right on my game. comment here hmm? he stepped up his game because of the the Mont Blanc made him feel fancier I guess here it is okay bubble butt Jesse oh yes I love him he's he's hilarious <laughs> I purchased my first Mont Blanc marble serpent and it is by far the softest nib I ever had also, when you wear it out in public, it gives you that elegant confidence um, mm-hmm. I can't get from any other pen. It changes me mentally. And I'm usually a pajama pants in public wearer. Now I'm actually looking decent. <laughs> is that great? I that mean, is, that like me really be. honest. I thought that was funny. Yeah. Hi, friends who are joining He's us right funny. now. Bubble Butt Hi, Jesse. I think, I think Bubble Butt Jesse's in Houston. Bubble butt. Oh, if you're really? here in Houston, we got to meet up at Drongle sometime just to say hello to each other. Because I, you know, I he makes me laugh. He is funny. This is what I fear. Mont Blanc's are a problem. Now I want one that costs over two twenty. It's. I think it's a bit so, of a yeah. two thousand two hundred numbers that again. Is, me off. Um, that's a kind of expensive. That is a, a mortgage payment. It is a slippery slope. So the one that I got that was even, it was still 20% off was the Glacier. And I really feel, I don't know if that one was worth it because it's, it's, it's beautiful, but it, all the detail is in the cap and it's the metal heavy cap with the, yeah. with the resin the body. body right? Okay. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful writer, but I, you know, when you take the cap off, you're just left with this and it was, 800? Yeah. That, see, yeah. It was a Christmas gift. It was like, I mentioned it, and then it, it arrived for Christmas, and it was really nice, and I, I love it. Would I purchase that one again? No, I am. I would part, I I would go back to an, another 149 from a different yeah. era, because I have a vintage one, and then I, I have one from the 80s, I believe, and then I have uh-huh. one, or early 90s. And then I have one from the 2000s, which hopefully Sid can answer. I bought my first one from Sid. Okay. Um, and yeah, it is it is interesting, but I do love my baby so much. Yes, I love the baby. The baby is still one of my favorite pens ever. Let me get my baby. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. And Come would here. you give us a little walkthrough on, look, we'll do the close-ups. Oh, Boom. hello. <laughs> Make sure the makeup's okay when we go so close in. <laughs> little baby. Little nugget biscuit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have one here. I just don't know if I can do it. All right. No, I, I can keep a straight face that so long. We can toast. How do we do that? Nope. Uh, I would have to go this direction. So ready? And? Ready? Nope. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, we're so sorry. Um, I'm not sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry. not sorry. In fact, I'm going to post this bebe and just show you all how cute you it is. You are legally required to pronounce it bebe. Bebe. Just Moira, like Moira Rose. Honestly, every, I will, I've looked at a lot of reviews on Mont Blancs, and I feel like this is the one that consistently gets a lot of love. It's like it's, people it's say awesome. it's expensive, but it's like little perfection. It is. This, I love the star on this. I'd be lying it, if I said I didn't love this star. Oh, I do too. And I, I don't and know. And I love that it's antique and it's like a little orangey and not as red. Yeah. It's so it's like a got a vintage flair yes. about it. And the nib, I don't know about how your nib writes, but my nib is excellent. Beautiful. 
like butter. It's a nice, got a little bounce. So that's what I'm getting ready to show, Wendy Sue. This is the the only downside is it only takes these little baby cartridges. Well, so same with the Boem. Uh, it only does little cartridges. There's so yep. here's the Boem next to the baby, the baby. So you can see it's also a pocket pen. So the Boem's like I a love little bit pocket pens. I'm going to start censoring <laughs> Vanessa's side of the screen. No. <laughs> I love, love them. Um, so, let me, here, I want to show y'all a demo of the poem real quick, because this is what's so cool. You're just like, so what? It's a little black pocket pen. What do you do? So there's the fake onyx. It has some magic going on. But there's some magic. So let me take this off. So take it up. <gasps> Where's the nib? Oh, oh my gosh. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, so I'm, I'm posting the cap and I'm going to keep twisting it on and voila. There's that is nib. so cool. Now there's show me your baby posted next to that. Posted. And is the nib size on the Boehm looks larger or is it the it's same? It's bigger. I it think it's bigger. bigger. Well, you know what? Maybe they're the same, but they are different nibs. So here... They are together posted. Oh, okay. So yeah. So the Boehm makes a you know a nicer size pen because the baby really is. I mean, it is that was sensual. <laughs> you know, I'm I have a confession to make. I have a confession to make. Uh -oh. I had a huge cup of coffee before we came on. So uh oh, we're huge. gonna get caffeinated, Vanessa. So. <laughs> so yeah okay so yeah so what i did about where yeah, i have to flush it so uh shown design shown design has a little contraption made especially for bach nibs and i believe that's what mont blanc uses but it said like uh um next to the description it did say for the Boem. so he makes a little cleaning tool for this it's like 10 bucks oh wow so i bought one for when it's time Okay. Yeah. They don't make and their own in-house nibs. I don't know if they do or not. Um, I have to look we'll that up. That I don't know. Yeah, same the first thing. But you sure also, let me show you guys the the cartridge. It only takes cartridges, but this is really She's dodging that question, Jamie. Oh, hold on, hold on. So. Oh, this is very cool too. This is what I mean. Those. That is so uh, cool. Yeah. So you can check your cartridge. But yeah, I think that's really, that's really cool. It's a little. Um, besides when coffee, I was in Box no. Lake, I got little empty cartridges, little tiny ones. I, they were $4. I paid more. I mean, it was four bucks, but they yeah. were, I think, six empty baby cartridges that I bought specifically for my baby. So I could put oh, fun cool. in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can like change the ink around all that stuff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no, it was, it was just coffee. Um, Allegedly. Hey, you know, uh, I'm willing to try different things. Just so mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> it's a new Vanessa's collab pen, Lethal Aphrodisiac. Ooh, oh, I like. I do like that. We can have or that could be a, rock could be on after ink. dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it could be an ink. Yes. That would be a cool ink. It would be like black with glitter. Yeah. Glitter isn't just for strippers, people. We do have to have Juicy Broads After Dark as our title. That would be fun. <laughs> would be Irish sick. coffee on St. Patrick's oh, Day. Oh, I mean, you know what? I do like some Irish coffee. That's so sad. as far as the nibs go for Mont Blanc, <laughs> yeah. um, there is a lot of hype over vintage nibs pens in general being better than contemporary pens so mm -hmm. when i purchased my 149 um in orlando which i probably shouldn't talk about too too much until my friend sid is here he had a lineup of like six or eight and he's like try them all and he's like taking them all apart cleaning them yeah. while we chat and um so I did. I wrote with all of them. And as you all know, I do favor a juicy broad nib or at least a medium or above. Um, but there was something about this pen. I loved that it was 
a bicolored nib. I really liked that. Mm -hmm. And this had a split, split ebonite feed. And a lot of the other ones had a plastic feed. Yeah, so there's really the, this is my favorite one for night. So this is my only one for you. And I have the curved calligraphy nib on it, which is a huge nib, by oh, the way. Oh, beautiful. Um, but it it's has awesome. When did you get yours? Mm, probably just over a year ago. That I got is that a relatively new nib? Yes. It okay. just came out like a year ago. They they did another calligraphy nib where the nib was a little more soft and flexy, which I missed out on. But this one, it's kind of like a, almost like a Fuda nib. Okay. A Fuda crossed with an architect. Ooh. So it makes a nice, juicy, broad line. Roll credits. There it is. Juicy broad. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. Um, could you hold up next your 149 one. next to an oversized SD? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be more than happy mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So here is the candy mm -hmm. with the 149. So the candy is bigger. Yeah. But like, I feel like Gert, that, that's my only oversized SD. Look at, I've never compared our candies before. <laughs> yeah. They're, it's, oh, it's strong pen. They're, <laughs> they're all different. They are so pretty. Are we, so we I, want to know cheers that one? The little bit of gold. Clink. Clink. We're going to perfect this. <laughs> All right, I'm there. I'm there. Um, <laughs> where are the balloons this week? Oh, that's right. Wait a second. What do we do? Oh, yeah. Show, Show the balloons. balloons. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Mine doesn't um, do that, so. Anyways. I'm not cool enough. Uh, you're, are you asking me... But I would say this Sherry's is a little to take my cap off. Correct? Oh, they want the caps off to see. It's like, this isn't Mardi Gras, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, take my, your cap off. More similar, more similar that way. All right. This, your candy is oversized. That's funny. We both have the same. Yeah, this is the only oversized SD that I own. You know what's crazy is looking at the nibs side by side because that 149 nib, the shoulders it's are huge. Like, oh. Yeah. Like wearing shoulder pads. Right? Yeah, because this is a number six nib, so this has got to be number eight. The, um, I would say the difference is, though, that on the oversized SD, where you hold the pen has this significant step down, so it's yeah. much more narrow. You know what I, I mean? The Mont Blanc is a bit more comfortable, in my opinion. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I do love my Mont Blanc. I get I definitely get tired. Ooh, I'm hugging them. Yeah, they're really uh, nice. Um, so the reason I got a second one was because I got a good deal on it, and it was pre-owned, and it was from a different era. It had a 14 uh -huh. karat gold nib instead of an 18 karat gold nib. It did not have the ebonite feed. It had a different ink window, I believe, or are they similar? Um, so the ink window on this, it's striated. I yes, I think I can show That's what this one is. Never compared our candies before, <laughs> like watching the Great British Bake Off. So, <laughs> um, so this one that I got, this is a medium. <clears throat> and the only reason I left the sticker on here was just to help me out when I'm writing, just for now. And I want yeah. to look at this one. Oh, I think oh, a lot of people do that with like the their pilot pens. Like now I don't know which cap goes on which. Good luck with that. That's terrible. Do they both fit? Like, were they? Do they? I'm gonna say this goes on my older one. Ooh, that's terrible. I just did that. I think I got it right. My ink window is a band. Yes, those. That's the model of some of them. So my my thinking is that one of these I'm gonna send off to the. What's the company Pokemon that does? Them? Yes, thank you. Pokemon I'm on the wait list. But then I thought maybe I should send a Japanese pen. I'm not sure yet, but this is what I got the estimate and approval on was for a Mont Blanc, so 149. So I'm probably gonna send one of these off, but I'm also a little concerned that it's gonna make it even more girthy because this is, well, they, they won't do anything here though. I can't <clears throat> here. Well, it might be flush enough to the resin that it might be okay. Yes, I would hope. 
Yeah. Now I'm stressed about the caps on these. Don't trust well, them. You know what? They both have, they have the serial number, so I can probably tell by that. I think I wrote the serial number down to my one from Florida. Um, so I'll be able to, to tell from that. The very first Mont Blanc that I bought, I got on Poshmark. And this I paid $90. And this is the Noblesse. It's really pretty. It's a really a beautiful pen. pen. It's a little, see how this comes up a little high? My little clip is a little stretched out. Um, and it's got the, there's my little snowflake. This nib is beautiful. Look at how different this nib is, though. That is. It's, it's like, like a, a little flat nib. It's very, like, it's a very feminine pen. Yeah. I brought this to the um, Fountain Pen Hospital. Uh -huh. And the the gentleman who was waiting on me, he was such a hot, he was so funny, like New Yorker, had me cracking Wait, up. Wait, did you say he was hot? He was a hot ticket. Like, What's funny. Like, like, oh. Like, funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was a cutie. I wouldn't use the word hot. I think I have toffee brown. It wasn't brown like John Ham. Not like John Ham hot. Nope. Not many people are John Ham hot. <laughs> um. But this is a really nice nib. And he, oh, he kept writing with it and saying, this is so nice. This is such a beauty. And I think this one's from the 80s or 90s. And I really like it. There was a short time I was wondering if I would like hold on to it. And I was like, why wouldn't I? It's yeah, for that great. price, you got a great deal on that. Exactly. I did. And yeah. it's a beautiful writer. Um, yeah. It says Mont Blanc, Germany. So this is a great entry level Mont Blanc pen because while I got it for 90, I think you can typically find it. Correct me if I'm wrong, if people have researched these, that you can get these between like 150 and 250, I think is the more That's common price, which still is not bad for Mont Blanc. It's it's a really beautiful writer. I really Willem do like says it. he would Willem says he would call it gold finger. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Is that like 007? Yeah. Um where are we? I'm having a similar predicament. I'm trying to decide if I want an Aurora or a Sailor King of Pens to go to Boca Mundo. Mm. Mm. So those are two pens I don't have. I don't have a King of Pen and I do not own an Aurora. You don't have, you've got to get an 88. That's an 88. Like you, know 88. Do you know what it is about the 88? I found that I like my pens to be like all one color. I'm not crazy about the black and the black on the ends. I yeah, like I, I see what you mean. That. Yeah. So unless I, I got a darker one and I felt like it blended a little more, I feel like the contrast is Jay bought me a Leonardo that I exchanged and then got um the the Paniter when I was at Atlas. And it was mm -hmm. like kind of like golden, like starburst, like yellowy gold, and then black cap, black finial. And I, I just I didn't love it. I didn't love it. I, and yeah, I feel like that's I, the 88. I get it. But the, the the reason why I say the eighty eight is the the nibs are good. Really, in house nibs, and I like their nibs. They're expensive. I think they that's are why. Like I, when I first started, uh, Leanne says her Aurora is on spa holiday in Italy, being wow. repaired. I wish I could have traveled with your pen over there. Okay. <laughs> it's so nice. The only issue is Aurora pens look so good just as they are. Oh, we have a big Aurora fan. There is no okay. issue then. Um, yeah. we want to know what happened to your pen, Leanne? Why is it on? Yeah. What happened to yeah. Um, well, oh, you know what I did bring out? I thought would be fun for our talk today. I is my Greta Garbo muse pen. Oh yes. I, so I bought this second hand and now I'm trying to sell it. Okay. And now I'm like, should I just not? Because the prices that everyone lists these at, myself included, is outrageous. Because I don't really want to sell it. But if I got a ton of money for it, I'd sell it's it. It's like, why not? So this is it. Um, it had never been inked. So I bought it brand new. And then I inked it once or twice. Comes with this little booklet mm -hmm. with, like, images of Greta Garbo. And talks a little bit about the Muse series from Mont Blanc. And this is her pen was the first in the series. Somebody in the chat said they have the new one, the turquoise blue. I don't know who that belongs to. There's Elizabeth Taylor is like a. Yeah, the Elizabeth one. Taylor. The, that was a little weird. the Elizabeth Taylor one has like this like door knocker on it. You know what I'm talking yes. about? Yes. What, what is that? It doesn't appeal to me. 
The no. one issue with this, and I see it in a lot of listings, is this stuff is flaking. And it was flaking when I bought it. Like the, oh. the case is like disintegrating, which is lousy because- It's kind of like the old Louis Vuittons of the 90s doing that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, the stuff yes. feels and gets sticky. It peels, mm. yeah. Like this stuff is like falling apart in, in this package. I disclose that, obviously. But the pen itself is- so my aesthetic and it's so beautiful that is very classy it's so classy vanessa and it's got the the big star which i love so you know what's funny i bought this like over i feel like it's been a year and now i feel like i've i spend more money on pens and i'm like i should just keep it the problem is kind of similar to my glacier i feel like all the beauty in this pen is in the cap it's in the cap Gorgeous. The pearl. Is the, is the barrel resin? Yes. See, I, I have a problem with that. Why is it? And the problem I have is it does not, it doesn't stay on. Like if I could go like this and just write my little heart out, I'd be so happy. This is not secure. And I think it's like, it has fallen off while I've been writing. I mean, it looks oh, pretty secure wow. now. It is such a beautiful pen. It's a beautiful writer. The yeah. nib is gorgeous. That little heart, like shape of heart in there. It's so beautiful on every level, but I don't feel comfortable writing with the cap hmm. on it. And then I'm writing like this, and this just is not worth it to me. And I feel that way with my Glacier as well. Yeah. But at least the Glacier is a beautiful blue, you know? Yeah, and is that, that, that blue is really gorgeous gorgeous and this pen is so beautiful and it has and this was the first one in the series it says greta garbo right here it's is that a pearl? pearl it's got the pearl mm. here i don't know if it's a real one based probably on the not. poem yeah i was gonna say um, probably not yeah it's it's just lovely um i'm gonna ask sid what i should do i'm gonna say sid should i keep yeah. it yeah do sid? i love it or do i list it yeah love it or list it isn't that a tv show <laughs> That's what, I, yes. Every time I get my nails done, they have love it or list it on. So, <laughs> yes. Yesterday they loved it when so I was every there. time I'm at my mom's house, it seems like we're watching that or right something on HGTV. That's how, that's mm. the only reason why I know about it because otherwise I wouldn't watch it. I don't yes, really watch so a whole lot of TV. So. It's absolutely beautiful, but I'm very torn with that one. So I have it listed. High, list. It is listed. Mm. Um. That pen is gorgeous, Lori. So sad. I'm on a pen diet until August. All right. Well, it might still be around at the price I have it listed at. Pen diet? No. If, and honestly, Poshmark takes 20%. So I list it high. I'll end up taking probably two or $300 off the price, and then they'll take 20%. So I would much rather sell it directly. Oh, yeah. Um, so Definitely. what about Mont Blanc Inc.? Okay. So I kind of think it's overpriced. I only have a, a couple bottles of it. I think I have like three or four bottles of Mont Blanc ink. So I just, I just kind of feel like it's overpriced. And then after the whole like um, controversy with the ink colors being repeated, I was like, that really turned me off. I can see that. You know? I did not hear about that controversy until the dark lilac controversy. And then everybody yeah. was comparing it to the Mont Blanc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was, yeah. Cause they would just basically take <laughs> an already existing color, slap a fancy name on it. So like these bottles are not that expensive. I bought no, this from in okay. um, Orlando, but these, what do these retail for? Oh gosh. 20 ish, 24 ish. Yeah, 20 something ish. 20 something. Compared to the special editions, uh, you know, in the square, there's like 40 or 50, something like that. These are expensive. I usually get this from Cult Pens, has them inexpensive, usually. Cult Pens, of course. Yeah, that's a good place to shop for that. For So I did get Glacier because if I'm going to spend all that money on the pen. Obviously. And it's really like a perfect blue. It's like I'm not a big blue ink person and I love the Glacier blue. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I sent Jeffrey a sample of this and he sent me, Jeffrey, what did you send me? It was like a midnight navy blue Mont Blanc. Hmm. And I also bought Robert Louis Stevenson, 
which is right in my wheelhouse too, because it's like a goldeny brown, yeah. like greeny undertones. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I kind do of like, have. A little like cafe crema, but a little more golden, I would say. Yeah. Blue. No, I did buy the BMW Mont Blanc ink. Yes, it exists. You what can only buy it through BMW. No so way. I do I do have that. And it's a nice blue. It's blue. It's blue. Like I feel the like blue. You need like a red Mont Blanc ink. I do. I don't think I have one, but I do need one. We need to remedy that ASAP. Yeah. Next time I, I get have goggles. Poppy red is is the are the cartridges. I remember, I don't know where I was, but they were basically the only thing available. They're almost they almost are like the like the star on the baby. Like they have a little bit of an orange undertone. Oh, okay. The pretty corn, corn poppy red or something like that. I have those in cartridges. And I like their toffee brown. I have that in cartridges. I think but I have that in cartridges. Spectacular. Yeah, I think I've got the toffee brown. I bought the toffee brown cartridges to go with the baby. Yes, I think that and, is in yeah. my baby right now. The baby. Um, we have some suggestions here. Let's see. Moder Moderna red and poppy red aren't true reds, though. Poppy red definitely isn't. It's poppy red more of an orange red. It's orange for orange sure. Red. I don't know about the other one. Try Graphon Faber Castell Hazelnut. Ooh, favorite brown. That sounds, that's yeah, that sounds delicious. I Their olive one. green is my favorite. That's an ink company that's beautiful those bottles are beautiful those bottles are expensive too they though. are yeah those They're are cool. very expensive too mont beamer mont beamer uh to go with your bmw all right this is fun oh wait leanne said something red fox in burgundy oh le petit prince oh that pen is one that got away that i saw and i hesitated on the petit prince and it was almost like a brownish burgundy color, the pen itself. Yes, I know what you're saying. And about. as I was researching it, I saw it for sale. Oh, we have Sid. Sid is here. All right, who's Sid excited? Here, jazz hands. Yay. Sid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to Sid. All right, here we go. We're adding him. <laughs> well, hey. Sid. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Sorry, I'm just trying to fix my camera. You're doing great. Take your time. Good. You, you look great. Good. You look good. <laughs> you, right. you look fantastic. How was the train ride home? Terrible, absolutely terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. Sid. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. The MTA is just not the best. Okay. Mm. Are you in Manhattan, Brooklyn? I'm, Where are you? Classes are. Oh yes. Yeah, but I'm back in Long Island. Okay. But how is everyone? How are you guys? Good. It's We're great. Good. Yeah. We're like blindly talking about Mont Blanc, like we have <laughs> the clue, and we really don't. We just like this is a pretty pen. Wait till Sid gets here; he'll tell yeah. you the real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about, or what pens have you guys talked about so far? Uh, we talked about the Boem and the Bebe and the One Forty Nine so far, and then you have a couple that we talked about. Lori. Yeah, well, I, I shared with them how I bought my 149 from you and how yes. you're like a you're like a Mont Blanc Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I would be a Padawan, I guess. Oh. Learning, still learning. Uh, well, <laughs> just know that Sid is very modest because he's incredible. Um, so I was just sharing with everybody that Vanessa and I were both in Orlando, and that is where I met you for the first time at the Orlando Pen Show, you and Mike. And um, that I was really nervous about purchasing a 149 for the first time and totally took all like you just helped me relax and you put out your little tray with like eight Mont Blancs. And then I ended up choosing the extra fine, which surprised me. But I liked the ebonite feed and the split ebonite feed and that it was a vintage one. I think it was from the early 90s. Um, you've probably sold 300 Mont Blancs since then. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I mean, I've done a few shows since then, and and yeah, a lot of one forty nines have gone since then. I mean, that's probably the one that I advocate for the most because it's my favorite pen, mm -hmm. um, and it's the best, in my opinion, highly biased, but the best beginner luxury, like I uh, ultra luxury luxury pen that you can get into. Um, and then getting into the world of Mont Blancs, obviously, you want to start with either a one forty six or a one forty nine. Yeah, that's well, what I started with. 
Say again. I started with the 146 and then it, 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 it was just a little too slim for me and I, I sold it back to drum goals. So, but it was yeah. a good plan. Yeah. I, uh, I don't usually use the 146 unless it's like a special edition such mm -hmm. as maybe we have something here like this one, the Tsar Nikolai, which is like a 146 special oh, edition. Wow, that's gorgeous. Which is like Malachite on the top and then Verme um, at the bottom. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Wow. Wow. Um, Sid, before we get too in into it here, do you do you want to give a little introduction? Yeah. Yes. Tell us about yourself, Sid. Say hello to the people. <laughs> Hi, people. I'm Sid. <laughs> um, I am 24 years old. I'm currently a medical student. So young. <laughs> I'm a medical student in New York at uh, CUNY, CUNY School of Medicine. And I'm currently in an, enrolled in an MD PhD program. So uh, along with classes, I also do research. Amazing. And uh, on the side, I do my pens, repairs, and you know, reselling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also currently working on, you know, extensive repairs such as, you know, um, learning how to machine new barrels and stuff like that. So really getting into the wow. um, heavy duty aspect of restorations. Wow. And didn't you start with Mike when you were like a teenager? You were very young when you kind That's of went into pens? Yeah. So actually I was, I think 11. Yeah, I was 11 when I met Mike for the first time when I was in fifth grade. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. From, uh, I was, I got into fountain pens because <sighs> I uh, had watched uh, the Diary of Anne Frank movie. Well, I had read the book and then I had watched the movie after with my mom and she was writing with a fountain pen and that's what actually had gotten me into fountain pens because they had emphasized her use of a fountain pen through the whole book oh to portray her life huh. thank you oh, Aaron. that's pretty cool <laughs> wait what did i miss oh I love your hat what does it say i'm sorry i can't it know. says peace or uh, salam oh, oh very cool i love very it very nice um and yeah so i uh Biophysics researcher. Oh, maybe I know them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I uh, I watched that movie and then I had asked my dad, you know, what is this and stuff like that because, you know, I had no idea what it was. And he told me, you know, it was a fountain pen and then explained to me how he had used them back in uh, Indonesia and Sri Lanka and India and, um, you know, traveling around Asia when he was a kid. And and then uh, I had asked him, you know, where can I get one of these? Or like, do they still use these? And then he had taken me to Staples the next day to get my first cross found. I think the cross of Ventura or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, then after that, I uh, had seen online, I would just like had researched fountain pens. And I guess like Google Ag services showed me like the Long Island Pen Show page. And that's mm -hmm. when it was still the Long Island Pen Show, not New York Pen Show. Mm -hmm. And then... I had just attended the show and I was the youngest person there. Um, and now, nowadays in the community, you see some, some younger kids, but like during that time, like I was probably the only young you kid. must have been so cute, little Sid. <laughs> so cute, my dad. And I was just walking around and um, a lot of people were just explaining things to me. He, he gets, he gets a, a little sidetracked from the comments. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. <laughs> No, it's, it's funny. Okay. No, Do you want to answer this? Because he'll stop and he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because no, it's like showing up on my screen and then I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why is there only one? Well, you know, Willem, that's a fair question because you you don't really um, hype up your Instagram page. Yeah. Yeah I, don't, picture. yeah, I don't prefer to use Instagram except for like the stories options. Um, and that's, well, really because I don't have the enough time to really manage like all the interactions through social media because it's like i have to deal with people across the world like at all hours of the day and stuff like that so i try to limit my presence on that so that people don't have like expectations of me to you know be super you know on it but i would like to increase my presence on social media soon um you know with the creation of like my website and stuff like that um in your but, downtime from being a full-time med student right. you know, yeah but I'm, even on my personal instagram i don't post much i probably have maybe three posts so it's like i have never really been into it but i will start getting more into it 
um, you know, because I should increase my presence. I usually use it as like a communication tool for when I meet people at shows mm -hmm. and like we can stay in contact and stuff like that or for virtual pen show. Yeah. Yeah. But do you true. find that you're busy enough through word of mouth? Because I, I thought your work was so great and I felt like I could trust you. And I've talked to other people in the community who have worked with you. Um, like my friend Claire Coco, I know has sent some pens to you. I believe worked with Claire and Peter, but um, yeah, very good. I would consider them family at this point. Aww, oh wow! Yeah, yeah they're <laughs> really sweet. Um, yeah, so I I just thought it was a really special experience for me to be able to sit and watch you take one of these pens apart so confidently and kind of explain what's going on on the inside and then say, "Don't ever do this." on your own. Don't ever try this at home. <laughs> I said, I promise I won't. My experience, Lori, is actually, well, I started doing that at DC. And actually, I realized that, you know, I could restore all these pens at home and stuff. But, and to a certain extent, I have to, you know, for like major repairs. But yeah. if I have the opportunity to, you know, you know, when I buy these pens in bulk and stuff like that, and, you know, they need to be cleaned or repaired, um, I like to give the customer the experience of actually knowing what they're getting mm -hmm. and like, you know, being included in the whole process of their pen, you know, when I can. And I feel like it may, just makes the pen a lot more special. And it also is like, totally. um, I feel like you know, if you're spending, you know, a certain amount of money on a pen or something like that, that you should really get the service and like explanation that you deserve to understand what you're buying. Absolutely. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was really fun. And I just remember like you had a chair there and I could try every pen and there were some really high end ones as well. And you, you would, you and Mike both were just so casual and I was able to, I, I, because I know for a fact I would have never on my own chosen an extra fine nib. I don't yeah. think I just wouldn't have gone in that direction. It's been, it's been a beautiful writer. I love that it has the ebonite fee. I love that it's vintage. Yeah, you bought one of the best errors, I think, uh, Ebonite Feed, so early 90s, late 80s. Um, yeah, I love a nice extra fine nib. I mean, that's all I write with in daily writing with my permanent inks, like the, uh, mm -hmm. what's that, Platinum Permanent Black, the really dark one. Carbon. Carbon Black. Carbon yeah. Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I use often. Um, but I would even say that you probably wouldn't go with an extra fine, a modern extra fine, um, as compared to the extra fine that you have, because the extra fine that you have is still like more of a fine than a true extra fine, whereas now the modern That's fine like, it. <laughs> like needle okay. points. Yeah, okay. they are. So how did Fast you get into needle. Mont Blanc? Like, I mean, so you, you know, I'm just curious because you're you're into you know taking them apart, putting them back together, fixing them up. Mont Blanc, why? Oh, that's that's where Mike uh, kind of had influenced me. Um, so basically, when I had gone to that first show. Um, Mike was the only and the biggest Mont Blanc dealer there, probably in the States. And so uh, I had just been looking at all these pens and, you know, the 149 was the first pen that I picked up because it was so nice, but it was at that time too big for my hands. Um, and then also obviously too expensive for me. And so then uh, Mike had uh, had a box of like pen parts and um, there was a Mont Blanc uh, like 21 which is like a, a user grade, like old one. And uh, it actually didn't really need much done to it. So I had taken the pen to, um, to Richard Binder, uh, who was at the show at the time. And like, he had just shown me a few things about, you know, how to get it start working again. And uh, then I was just really into it. Um, and I was always into engineering and stuff like that. So before I went to uh, my med program, I was actually in a mechanical program. <laughs> So, you know, I was always into that aspect of like cars and pens and stuff like that. The so tinkering I, and taking apart yeah, and exploring. Yeah. yeah, seeing how things work. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, from there, it kind of just started. I kind of learned, started learning. And then I discovered Fountain Pen. Uh, Net, yeah, Fountain Pen Network. And through there, I was like reading all like the repair forums. And, you know, at the time, I didn't really understand all of what they were saying. But over time, like when I had kept on saving these pages, um, I had just kept on referencing back to them. And as I knew more from other places, I was able to relate more to these repair articles. And then from there, yeah, it just started. And then maybe in like 2017, I really started like buying tools for myself and like 
fixing stuff for myself. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like I had just started joining pen groups and stuff like that. And then during COVID, I think I, I was on the DC, yeah, the DC pen crew, um, yeah, zoom. And I was like fixing my own pen and then someone like needed help with their pen. And then I was like, Oh yeah, you can send it to me. I have the tools or whatever. And it kind of just started from there. And then I had gone to the DC pen show where Mike was and I had some of my tools with me. And then I looked at some of Mike's pens. I was like, you know, Mike, let me fix this and that. And then he was like, you know, do you want to just do this for me? And I was just like, yeah, I will. And so then that's when I kind of started my, like doing it for like the public. Mm -hmm. But before then I've had been learning and then, but that was just like with modern pens and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really understand like the, um, the vintage realm at that time yet. Cause that was like pretty complicated. So just within the last five years, I've learned how to do, you know, vintage pen restorations, but really within the last three years is when it's really been like uh, rigorous learning. Um, I don't know if you guys know Osman Sumer, um, Vanessa, I think you know Osman, right? You were in I, I believe I've met him. Yes. Um, so he's like the grandmaster of uh, Mont Blanc, well, vintage Mont Blanc and Pelican pens. Like he knows more than Mont Blanc itself, and <laughs> and so I'm actually learning from him how to do machining and how to restore, you know, vintage, uh, you know, pre 1920s like filling systems and stuff like that. Wow. Um, I'm and so that's impressed by that. Isn't that so cool? Been, in Germany, like in Hamburg in June, I'll go there to start to learn with him in person so that, you know, I spend a week with him to, you know, learn wow. some things there. How excited. Can I come with? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, be a little I'll be your assistant. I'll be your assistant. I'll just yeah. hang you, I'll hang you your tools and think of will me you, as your, your pen nurse. Will you be at school again here? You going What's back that? to Istanbul? Will you be in Istanbul oh, again this year? I hope so. I would really, really love to go back. That was a great time. An excellent trip. Excellent trip. Well, I'm excellent saying, trip. Um, <laughs> we do a lot of repairs there. We do a lot of repairs there, and they actually have a repair shop, like an actual pen repair shop in do Istanbul. They? So wow. Wow. I would definitely recommend coming to see that if you are there. Oh, for sure. Oh, I, if, now that I know it exists, yeah, All right. definitely. Sid, how many pens would you say you repair or work on in a month's time on average? Uh, just looking at my desk over here. <laughs> Maybe like 50. Wow. Goodness. That's a lot. Because yeah, that's just like, well, 50 for like what I buy and sell. And then for what other people send to me is like, it could be even like 65 or something like that. Oh, I see. So these are the things that you're buying to flip, to restore and sell. Yeah. 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 So that's why our like collect so extensive. Mm. You just like buy a lot and then every free time I get, I'm just repairing a pen. Where yeah. do you buy I feel like from? this is the benefit of niching too and just like oh, being yeah. so specific, you know? Yeah, yeah. Unless I was where asking you, who you buy from. Yeah. Where do you find, like, where do you find all of them from? You know, I mean, it's. So we have a lot, like some people just come to us. There'll be someone in like Oklahoma that somehow found out about Mike <laughs> through or something that'll call him and be like, oh, well, I found this vintage collection in a garage somewhere, and you know, or this someone owned a Mont Blanc store back in the 80s. And, you know, when they closed down, they still had all this, you know, new old stock stores uh, stuff left. So, you know, we'll buy stuff like that. Um, we'll do a lot of estates, um, private collections, and a lot, a lot, a lot comes from Europe, particularly Eastern Europe. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like Hungary, uh, Poland, Poland especially, and Romania especially. Huh. That's fascinating. They would have known the Polish were into their Mont Blancs <laughs> so much. That's really interesting. That so really we have a couple questions. I think the biggest market was Eastern Europe actually at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Whenever you can answer, Leanne asked, how can I date a Meisterstück fountain pen in ballpoint set from my father pre-80s, probably late 60s, early 70s? Um, so you would date that based on the fountain pen. The ballpoints are hard to date itself unless you kind of look at the stampings of um, the Germany stampings on the clip. Um, but... If you want to date your fountain pen, you would know it's a 60s depending on the nib. Um, 
I is there a way to post like a share like a chart or something or I don't know that we can show no images. Idea. Maybe there might be new layout. There probably is Sid and I'm not familiar. We're just not that savvy oh. yet with this. So so you have a better visual representation. Um online, uh if you type in Google Mombong dating chart, and then you'll understand what I'm saying. My words based on looking at that chart. Mont but, Blanc dating chart. Okay. Yeah, Mont Blanc dating chart. There should be one from Kirk Spear on Pen Realm. Okay. <clears throat> um, and so basically, how you would date it is so from 1960 to 1985 to 90, they were in a transition pay, uh, period. Um, Mont Blanc had single barrel 149s. And. See if I can show one here. I'm just going to remove the question just so we can see everything Sid's showing here. Uh, I'm just looking for one. I'm sorry. Take your time. Yeah, we're we got nowhere to We're gonna have a love it or list it thing too when when you should tell us if we should sell or keep. Love it or list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe I don't have any vintage ones left. So we don't have any more vintage ones left, but basically um, on a vintage pre-80s or pre-85 149, um, this section piece and this barrel piece over here would be uh, together like as one part, you know, meaning that they were um, injection molded as one part. Okay. But then in the 80s, they decided to make it a, two-piece barrel system where this actually when you unscrew when you unscrew the nib unit um the nib unit will come out and then the section will come off and then the barrel will be its own separate entity mm -hmm. and so if you have that two-piece barrel and you can tell if you have a two-piece barrel based on this lip over here oh okay if, if it's a very defined <laughs> i like lori's got her pen yeah. she's all like look <laughs> right eh? <laughs> i think this is yeah amazing. that's okay yeah, that's a late 80s pen. That's an 80, yeah, 80, 80, 80s. This is a separate piece, right? Yeah. Huh. And so that's how you would determine a post 85 piece. And then, based, if you want to now specify on what year in between 1960 and 1985, then we look at the nib and the feed. So between 1960 and 1970, <laughs> they had um, the 18C nib with the, some had the, uh, some of the terms I'm going to be using, everyone might not be familiar with, but the groove shank ebonite feed. So it's an ebonite feed with two grooves, uh, two grooves for like uh, ink to go through. And it's like uh, very defined. And then on the six, on the seventies pens, you'd have uh, a solid ebonite feed where there's like no lines or anything. It just looks like a solid piece of ebonite feed. And there you'd have a 14 C nib, but those can be tritone, or as you get closer to the 80s, they could go to bitone. Mm -hmm. So you really have to look at all these overlapping factors to then like specify where like the line falls to match up. You know what I mean? So seeing if you have a single piece barrel, uh, plastic piston or brass piston, a uh, 14 C nib, an 18 C nib, tritone, bitone solid ebonite split ebonite groove shank ebonite so it's like you, you, that's why i'm saying you really have to look at that chart so you can like oh, visualize yeah. what you have but that's what makes this so much fun i think and that that's to me like the research of the the history with mont blanc is fascinating that's why i wanted to get a second 149 to see like one from a different era um how different it would be um which actually i don't know i this one says so what if it says west germany versus germany I have like the little sticker on it. Wait that second. says 18 carat, right, on it? The I think this is 14. No, I don't know. I can't see. <laughs> like, oh, you can't no. see that, Sid? No. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I kept the M on this one because this was the one I got on the real reel. I think that should be a, it's either from, it's probably from around 89 to 91. It has this to be. This one too. Yeah. But is I felt like this was a this looks like a plastic feed. Well, that is a plastic feed for sure. They had see, the thing is that 
now it gets a little bit complicated with dating these because obviously like when they were building these pens when they started introducing new parts they still had some old parts right so some pens got some old parts and something got some new parts so that with that pen it's like you have a 14k nib which should be from the late 80s but you have a plastic feed which means that it definitely had to be made in 90 or 91 and then it oh, says west wow. germany it said west germany in the ussr fell in you know 91 92 91 so mm -hmm. it definitely has to be from 90 or 91. Isn't that so cool how he's like, boom, boom, boom. So oh, yeah. when I worked at American Girl at the doll store, we had transitional dolls because Pleasant Roland used to own them and then Mattel bought them in 2000. So, but they had a bunch of heads left over that's had the Pleasant Roland stamp on the back, but then it would be put on an, an American Girl Mattel body and people would be like, well, is this is this a vintage one or is this a modern one? And we'd say, well, this is a transitional doll because the head is from Pleasant Roland. It would say the Pleasant Company on the back, but the body is Mattel. So, yes, you have like the extra pieces, but you don't want to waste them and right. you use them moving forward. So you have these transitional pieces. Exactly, exactly. But that comes for repair. It becomes a little bit uh, tedious because sometimes then when you like when I will knock out an ebonite feed from a 14 karat nib pen like the collar sometimes like will not fit more after time so then it's mm. like now i have to find a uh, a plastic feed to then replace this ebonite feed so then it's like not original not original anymore and then it's like yeah then it must kinda, depend on your client or you like how like how specific people want to be if they say just yeah, like, yeah exactly well yeah so you know, what i do is i just disclose and you know if they want it they want it and if they don't they don't but I how try hard to is it to find an ebonite feed to replace some of the, I mean. Um, to find out like an OEM, like Mont Blanc made ebonite feed, it's not that hard, honestly. But okay. but the only thing is like they're very finicky, especially the, the modern uh, ebonite feeds because since they're split, so basically the feed is a feed and then it's split horizontally across. So then sometimes some of the fins break off and then like I'll receive a, like batch of like 15 and like five will be broken. And it's like, ah, oh. huh. so interesting. Okay. I want to make sure we're getting some questions here. Um, Sid, do you use live auctioneers website to source your used Mont Blancs? Um, I have used it before, maybe like once or twice, but I don't consistently use it. I usually get my pens from like people that I know personally. What we use to write prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> great question. I'll show. You. And will you hook me up with prescriptions? That's the main question. <laughs> Just gotta know. <laughs> I uh, I well, this is my, one of my favorite pens of all time, the Platinum One Forty Nine, particularly Platinum. That one's pretty. With extra, with extra, fi with extra fine nib. Look at that's that. What I use consistently. That's oh, that's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna write your scripts with. Yeah, one hundred percent. That is so cool. Okay. And then, was, yeah. Go ahead. Probably another one I would use is this is not technically a Mont Blanc, but this is vintage Mont Blanc material, lapis celluloid from the '30s that um, a maker had made for me, um, fitting the Mont Blanc specifications and. It's got the, this is the 1960s feed, by the way, the groove shank feed that I was trying to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's got a modern platinum nib on it because that's my favorite Mont Blanc nib. So cool. That's a beautiful pen. That's very beautiful. Um, there was one other pen. And then I never, ever, ever use broad nibs, honestly. I'm not really a fan of broad or flexible nibs, but. <gasps> You're on the How wrong do we show like then, the Broad's live show, Sid? <laughs> We're gonna refund. No. no, you're fine. You're your volunteer time. Go ahead. That's a point. Wait, but but there's a but. <laughs> and there's a but. But find a signature. I know I'll need like a nice, a nice broad nib. I think. Yes. So I bought I bought a platinum broad nib, which is a little stubbish. I I like that characteristic of Mont Blanc uh, stub nibs that they're like stubbish. Mm, pretty. So you don't have that on a pen yet, though. You just have the nib ready to go. Uh, yeah, ready to go, and basically what I can do is just like, in an instant, just like unscrew it and switch it out. And they don't oh, want you to know you can do that, but you can do that. I didn't know you could do that before you said that today. So now that I know, 
to yep. play around. Uh, certain tool to like remove the nib, but it's worth the investment. Here's another question. Do you know if uh, Montblanc currently produces EF nibs for current Legrand pens? Yeah, so they do, but um, this is really annoying. But basically, Montblanc stores, depending on what boutique and what country you're in, um, only offers certain nib grades. In America and Europe, I believe that it's only fine and medium as the uh, standard nib grades. And then you have to buy the pen and then send it back to Montblanc for the nib exchange program. And then you can request an EF nib. Or I think if you buy from Mont Blanc, like Japan or uh, like Asian, like Southeast Asian and East Asian um, uh, Mont Blanc stores that they'll usually come in extra fine or fine because um, I think like they prefer to write in finer points. Interesting. Oh, that's cool. How does the nib exchange program work? I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, yes, so basically it's free. It's a free program. And basically um, you can basically buy any pen that you want from Mont Blanc. And within eight weeks, um, yeah, within the eight week period after purchasing, you can just uh, bring it back to the boutique and have it sent to Hamburg for a new nib. Whichever nib you want. Oh, wow. Yeah, Whichever nib you want. Fun. There's also the Bespoke program, which is ugh, crazy expensive. Oh, yeah, it's like $2,000 for like a nib. Wow. Yeah. Talking about like, like that big fat signature nib, yeah, like the signature like nib, that, but you can like, also know, like Vanessa written on the side or something like that, like as yeah, well as on the side or like a custom design or something like that on the nib. Ooh, cool. fun for two thousand bucks, no big yeah. Nib. We could get juicy broad nibs made for two grand, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's four gonna happen. So it's it's like it's crazy. Wow, wow, wow! This is fascinating, wow. Sid. Thank you so much. I knew this was going to be so good. Hi, Sid. I met you last year at the Orlando Pen Show. Hey. That's hey what's up? What's up? Um, okay. Uh, love it or list it. I, I have a question for you. I got this. Yes. What, what, are, what are your feelings on the muse, the muses? The, I have Greta Garbo. Uh, I don't think they stay on. That means list it. <laughs> he just bought it. <laughs> it's listed currently. I, it doesn't stay on the back. It just... I, it is I, beautiful, but I love Mont Blanc as a company, but I will not give them credit where they don't deserve it. Um, they really went cheap on some designs. Um, I think particularly for like, well, not I wouldn't say patron, not all patrons of art, but like great characters. I feel like they didn't really do the best on. Um, they were like cool and intricate designs, but not really anything special. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that also the Muse series they kind of like cheaped out on, like material wise size wise and like just putting effort into like a creative design creative new design i feel like it's beautiful like i love everything about it but i feel like all the beauty is in the cap it and it doesn't stay on so i don't know if that's supposed to be a magnet or what but it pop it kind of comes off the back i'm it's really like selling these and i'm never gonna sell it anyway why i'm saying it's why why didn't the engineers i like, think of that think about that you know what i mean yeah yeah think about Every little thing. So they definitely did think about it. Like they think about every little thing, you know, to the the type of magnets they use in their cap mechanisms. Like, you know what I mean? So, so they made a conscious decision to just yeah, scan. just for the design. I think, but I think it's design over performance in that on that series. Okay. And then That's I messaged you before about a Star Walker. And then you told me your opinion on that too. I do like the Star Walker series. I think it's a great. I would say it's a better rollerball and ballpoint series than it is a fountain series, for wow. sure, for sure. Um, yeah, oh no, I wouldn't say quality. I would say like, well, one I don't particularly like the smaller um, feeds and the mm -hmm. uh, type of nibs that they have. Um, like with that series, and I think the Montblanc M series also has a similar style nib, which uh, I just don't prefer that type of nib style. I think they don't really keep up the best, mm -hmm. but. I think that with some tuning and work that they could be it could be good but it's also depending on like your personal opinion like i'm being very hard on mont blanc because of like the pr pieces that they produced in the past sure you're comparing it to some of the vintage stuff and yeah yeah and i mean with with anything and i think we probably should say it but it kind of goes without saying like i could love something and sid could not and it would still be special to me pens are such a personal thing so sometimes you know i don't know I don't really take offense if people don't like my pens. He's looking at the questions. What drives like, 
Corinne, that's uh, been a huge, huge problem for many people. That is, uh, like, unacceptable. To, like, <laughs> a point where they're asking me, like, is there, like, any way you can, like, like fix this, like, send it, like, back or anything? And I'm like, no. That's just the way they all come. Uh, well, some are more consistent than others. Mm. See, this is, that, like, that's the issue. I mean, it's, like, the consistency as well. <laughs> I will follow my sword. <laughs> nice. I do like the. I wouldn't say that Montblanc necessarily has to be innovative in their design. I feel like it just has to. One, I feel like it should represent the history of Montblanc and not just try to, like, appease or just like make a new design just for a new design. Or like if they're, you know, designing it after a character, then you know, and for the most part they do this well. Um, you know, follow the you know characteristics of like that character, or like you know what their life mm -hmm. was about. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Greta Garbo, so. Right, and honestly, she didn't. It. I had no connection to her. The one, the one pen that I feel connected to would be the Beatles, because my dad was a huge Beatles fan. But I don't I really love that pen. Thing. But it's cool. I would get it if I could get it at the right price. But it's it's usually very expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With it. I'd probably want to buy that in person. Do you have it, Sid? No, I don't. <laughs> Do you I don't have it. So Vanessa I, and I both have the baby, and we both really yes. love this pen. There's my little baby. Where are you, baby? I think, uh, so actually, we fortunately had a good uh, LA show and stuff, so a lot of my special special uh, editions have gone. But I didn't have a I didn't have a Beatles, but I had the Beatles ink. The Beatles ink. That's really cool. <laughs> Purple. Right? I mean, you could do the ink. That's better than not anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, wait, I didn't see the baby bump plums. We love our babies. I love the baby. We I Very love the, the vintage color nib, like the orangey. The coral color? Yeah, the coral color, yeah. Very coral, cool. yeah. And it's we just think like the balance of these, everything about we both love them very much. I think it's impeccable. Yeah, so this is my favorite pen. The vintage version of this pen is my favorite pen, the Rouge et Noir. Mm. But, um, I really love this series a lot. Um this is one pen where what I just said is a little bit contradictory. How I was talking about like the small nibs and the small feeds and like the keeping up with it. I feel like I'll make an exception for this pen and like the Boem and stuff like that and the 912. But, <clears throat> but yeah. I, uh, those are just my exceptions because I like the design particularly, but I do think that the nibs could use tuning. Okay. This one had to be tuned when I, I got it used at drum goals and Kirk, just happened to be there and Kirk had to tune it for me. Yeah. To get it because it had a little bit of baby's bottom on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So gonna... that uh, that you also I don't know why I have no idea and I don't even have a theory about this, but on the smaller nibs, like they seem to have baby bottoms more often. Now, maybe it's because there's a smaller amount of tipping, so it's like Possibly. getting polished. I have no idea, honestly. Hmm. Um, what would be your grad match present to yourself? Um. Oh. That's a hard one. Probably. Honestly, I have most of the Mont Blancs that I want. Hmm. So. Your favorite in your current collection? Like what would be your favorite? Uh, my favorite is my 139 for sure. For sure. Because it's, I love flat top pens and I love oversized pens. Um, hmm. And then another favorite, which um, is actually in Germany right now. So I don't have it with me is my number 45 in um in uh, blue lapis material which mm -hmm. was probably the most expensive and nicest pen in my collection so yeah maybe a car instead like a ferrari <laughs> or something, you know. i love it maybe a car instead. like a ferrari or a fiat a fiat i'm a little bit too tall for a fiat <laughs> Uh, Mark says yeah. it would be a zodiac pen. Oh right, <laughs> there you go. That's what you need is a zodiac. There pen. you go. Um, Can we start in Orlando. If money was no option at all, then I would yeah. get. Yeah, let's say money is like no money is no object. What would it be? Um, maybe the Mont Blanc. Uh, Tychowski. 
Hmm. Tychowski. That's oh, like, fine. yeah, it's like. Look that up. Thirty-five. Are you it up, Lori? It's a it's a one forty-nine size, and it's beautiful. Mm. It's beautiful. Where is it? Is this it? This one says gold skeleton. A skeleton would be nice as well. That one? That's a skeleton. Yes, exactly. Oh, how lovely. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, so what's what's another one? We, t tell us about your experience repairing Bohems. Uh, it's a complicated repair. Ooh, I would imagine. It's, it's a Do complicated you get repair. Do um, So, no, I don't. Only because I recently started doing them because uh, you need a factory a tool from their factory that's like exclusive to their factory and i just happened to have been offered it from someone recently the factory to like a set of like 50 mont blanc factory tools which is now really going to help me out with like repairing like 912s and stuff like that I bet. Um, so i am getting into them i have known how to repair them but i never had the tools for them and they're weren't really things that people could make and it wasn't really something that you could find but someone that worked at the factory who they like i guess like got rid of some tools or whatever like i don't know don't ask any questions came but off the back of a truck <laughs> yeah. i was like i don't know yes yeah. <laughs> i don't know but they're mine now <laughs> well i'm like that's good to know if anything goes wrong with my bomb i know who to send it to but it's, it's really complicated but i would say that it's not over engineered it's like a beautiful design um fitting it all into one little pen well for the small series was probably their biggest challenge and like that's kind of what makes it also harder to remove like certain parts and stuff mm -hmm. and honestly it's not the removing the parts that's the issue it's the putting them back and having them you know all intertwine and work correctly yeah what do you think is a good price for a secondhand bohem because I know I know Vanessa got a good price. I'm just wondering what I should spend or shouldn't. Or do uh, have what we can buy from you? <laughs> uh, well, the small one. There's three sizes: large, small, medium. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, the What's large the one is. Common? Uh, the small one. The small one. The large one is like a few thousand dollars. Honestly. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the small one. Then I guess. Um, probably like four fifty. Yeah, but what I was looking at was five ninety. It was a lot. It's that terrible. Three ninety five. That's a good deal. Yeah, three ninety five is a good deal. Mm -hmm. And a case. <laughs> oh, a really good deal. Really good deal. Yeah. Um, five ninety is actually not a bad price if it's like comes with box and papers and stuff. Hmm. Okay. Saw the B. Oh, that is awesome, Shari. That is pretty cool. See, so you need the pen. <laughs> Or the I'll have them soon. I'll have them soon. I would love to be there. Comes my way with the connection. So what are some of the shows you're going to be at in the upcoming year? So I'll be visiting a Chicago show. I won't be vending there or anything, but I'll be, um, a lot of my um, European friends will be there, like Osman and Miroslav Tischler, if you guys know them. Um, so they'll be there. So I'm, I'm going to see them and to spend some time with them and also sit down with Osman and I, every time I get, I like to sit down with him and learn as much as I can. So I'm going for that. And then I'm also going to be, oh, actually, wow, you just reminded me from talking about this. I have a real treat for you guys today. Okay. Um, probably the most exclusive Mont Blancs that anyone has seen. I love we always get Juicy just, Broad exclusives. It oh, just juicy Broad exclusive, everybody. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, but I'll be at Chicago um, Dutch Pen Show. Oh, we'll be at the show. Yay. I'll see you guys there. Yeah, we're going. Awesome. And um, DC Yoseka Stationery Fest, I think. Okay, we're planning that one too. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco as a visitor. Mm. And then Orlando, Dallas, Istanbul. All right. I He's think like gonna, following you all the same. Yeah. We're going to be best friends by any Yeah. Year. <laughs> well, this is all theoretical. Like, given nothing comes up that I have to like prioritize, but yeah, right, of course, right. same, same. Yeah, but yeah, let me get one thing for you guys. So, Osman Sumer, the king of Mont Blancs, uh, actually, uh, so we were just together in uh, LA and Baltimore, and uh, usually I ferry 
pens and stuff for him from you know Germany to the U.S. Or I'll keep some inventory here with me to just so he doesn't have to carry it back from Germany. Um, so right now I have some special, really special, really really special stuff. I'm so excited. This has been it's, so much fun. We love you, Sid. Big bag. We have our real life and then our pen life. So true. Yeah, <laughs> that is so true. That's so weird. If you think about it that way. Wow. We have our lot. pen friends and our other friends. All right, That's I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put put her back together again so she can remain on eBay. The anticipation's killing me, man. Okay. So this is a uh, celluloid, first generation celluloid, 1950s, uh, 149. And uh, new, new old stock from the factory in its box with its papers. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. In mint condition. Oh my gosh. New so, old stock. This is the box. Wow. And this is the pen. It is oh. looking like brand new, absolutely brand new. Wow. And uh, if, but to the person that was uh, asking uh, about the uh, the nibs or the '60s nibs, a '60s nib could look like this tritone at sometimes. Oh, how gorgeous! And then have that flat feed sometimes. But if you have a flat feed, that's very lucky. That's very rare. So, if you needed to part with this pen, how much <laughs> would would it cost? Uh, for this one, so usually you can get a used one for a bit, between fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred. This one will probably be about twenty seven fifty to to three thousand. <gasps> Yost is here. Yo. Oh, hey Yost, he's back. Guess who's back? back and then back. this one has the original sales receipt and paper. Oh my gosh! Wow. You can see it says. 149 number that. and it's got uh how much did it cost back in the day this pen probably like uh so like a kid one, year two 150 right right <laughs> to get this pen yeah probably about 150 back in uh back in even the 80s 149s were like 295 or something wow but i guess you know over that is uh, so exciting. And then that is. So, what are, are you doing with this pen? Where is this traveling with you to a show to sell? Are you restoring? Like, these, 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 are, these are restored. Yeah. And these are restored in the inventory of Osman Sumer. Uh, and I'm bringing these to Chicago. Oh, my goodness. Do you get stressed carrying these around? Uh, No, not really. Not really. Well, because I like. Well, one, I don't take any public transit with like my pens and stuff like that. Um, That's good. And two, I like well, one, I'm yeah, Uber everywhere, and I like always have locks on my stuff, and I keep them in like Pelican cases and stuff. So like, if oh, that's good. Put guns, they can keep my pen safe. What? I said if Pelican cases can keep a gun safe, I think they can keep my gun. Uh, my pen. You're damn right. <laughs> You're damn right. <laughs> That's impressive. And then that it's handcuffed so to his wrist, so nobody yeah. can take them. Unless they cut his hand off. And then this. Uh, wow. Some really exclusive pieces here that I'll start taking out. Oh, uh, I'm drooling. So <laughs> this is a number 20 from the early 1900s. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Wow. I want to ask you how the numbering system works, but I feel like we're going to need more time. For Another that. like 20 just hour. means the 20 Reich marks at uh, Reich marks at the time. Okay. So that's what it costs. And then 25 means 25 Reich marks, 30, 35, 40, oh. 40. And it also correlates to the size. Okay. Wow. Um, I think this is a safety pet. Uh, no, let's show you guys safety. Show me some of the flat top That's what the Bohem reminds me of a safety pen. So the one that I was talking about, the number forty or forty-five, is this one, but this one is in black. Okay. And that's uh, pretty. Pretty. Wow. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Texas things. No, it's these pennants. 
And then no, I can't handle a, it. a flat top you want to see is this. This is a oh, nice look flat. at that clip. The oh, beautiful. And this one has got a telescopic piston filler. Uh, well, telescopic filler, actually. They couldn't call it pistons because Pelicans has patented, patented pistons. So they couldn't use pistons until they paid for using the patent in the 50s. Mm -hmm. But but uh, telescopic fish filler means that it's like two-stage. So maybe I can show you I'm, that. I need to write some of this stuff. I'm going to have to watch this over <laughs> again. Write down all this. Just, yeah, watch it over and take notes. Just enjoy the moment right now. Yeah, true. All you right. Come back. Good night. So a telescopic filler is like their earliest filler, and it means that there's like two rods, one that extends, and then another one that extends even further, as like a, in like a piston motion. So it's like a compli mm -hmm. more complicated piston filler, um, and those used corks instead of you know uh, rubber or plastic at the time. Oh wow! Do you have any other pens besides Mont Blanc? And if so, I feel I like do. you have Mont Blanc. What like what else do you? Because you never talk about anything else. Well, I. I <laughs> Don't carry anything else. But I do recently. That's all you talk about is Mont Blanc. I. It's like. Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc. <laughs> Mont Blanc, right, right. Yeah. When is it ever going to end? Um, but I never. This is like my first Pelican. But I recently just bought a Pelican. Because it was uh, the style of a vintage one. The 1935 limited edition Pelican. Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc. Monty don't start, young man. And I did kind of like the Van Gogh Mont Blanc. Thank you very much, Yost. Please pronounce Mont Blanc correctly, he said. Mont Blanc. So this is a Pelican. Oh. Ooh. Oh, how beautiful. the uh, 101M style. It's yes. a bit of a small pen, actually. So I never use small pens, but... So I have the monitor, the modern relaunch of like two of those. They're very cool. Yeah, so this is the modern relaunch actually. It's not the oh, is the, it okay. The vintage one is is uh nice, but I uh I wouldn't want to keep that material like to use daily. Mm. And I'm not much of a collector. I'm a I'm a user. Oh yeah. That's what yeah, they're meant to be used. Yeah, for sure. I'll use any pen, even if it's a million dollars. Mont Blanc. <laughs> Van Gogh. And uh, another one that I really like, and this is a pretty affordable pen, one of my favorite pens actually, um, is this uh, Wingsung 630. And you guys might be able to tell why I really like this nib, but uh, let's go. Oh. Oh, that. Oh, of course oh, you like that. It. Yeah, that is so cool. Uh, I like it. Nice. Uh, it's a gold nib. It's really nice. And it's like kind of a ripoff of like a 139 Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I'll take it. Uh, and uh, I like it a lot. And it's like, cost only like 250 And besides nice. that, actually, wait, I do. I do. I have another really good pen. This Omos material that I just bought. This well, it's a modern Omos, but it's like they have this new resin that came out that I really oh, like. That's so that's pretty. Really so you like blue? Yeah, that's the only color that's, I really. Yeah, pick. I was gonna say all the all these uh, different it's colors. Like, yeah, they're all blue. Heartbeat man. Those and, are fantastic. Yeah, I just I basically just have Omoses and this really beautiful Magna Carta made by one of my good. Very good friends here in, yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. I haven't seen that in person. Oh, it's a, this is probably the biggest in production. Nib yeah, one. it's like a ginormous nib. I haven't, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I don't have one yet, but yeah. How is it to write with it, Sid? This is a Bach number eight nib. I haven't written with it yet, but the nib is extremely smooth. This is a Bach number eight nib. Okay. And this is. <laughs> So is no. it like the Namiki Emperor size? It's actually bigger. <laughs> it's bigger. It's bigger? Yeah. Get out of here. That thing's wow. practically a weapon. Compare it to the 149 Yost has requested. Oh, uh, yeah. I will do so. If Yost requests And then I want I want you to recommend to our audience, like, top three Mont Blanc, like, just entry level or, like, I don't know, just share with us some. I know you think 149 is the best. Um. 
I would say 149 or 146, of course, to start with. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like... I like... Mm, to, to start off with is hard because you really want to start with like the 146 or 149, mm-hmm. honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, besides that, I would say... Like the sure Arthur Conan Doyle is nice, but like at the like they don't really have like standard lines right now. Like they have like limited editions, and then they have like the M series and like the the baby and stuff like that. But those are like well, the white baby was limited, I believe. Yeah, limited edition. That's why I, I jumped on it. Mm-hmm. I got mine from Yoast on a really good okay. sale. Um, I don't. I would say vintage Mont Blanc is better to get into because they had. That's when Mont Blanc was a, a actual pen company, and they had big user grade pens. Like you can get a really nice uh, piston filler, fourteen karat gold nib Mont Blanc with a you know hooded nib, like a number twenty one or like a two forty or something like that, for maybe you know one fifty to two fifty in great condition. And so I would say start off with those, and you can find really good deals. And I know people might not like eBay, but I advocate for eBay strongly for good sellers for good sellers Mm -hmm. besides, you know, I wouldn't say for modern things, but for, for vintage. vintage. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Cause I always wonder. There's a lot of fake Blanc Blancs on, uh, on, on uh, eBay, but (laughs) we, you know, what can you do? But Lumpy, have, what was that? Lumpy just came Lumpy's just losing his mind. I tried to tear him away from the window where he sees another dog. But oh. <laughs> um, Sid, I showed this earlier. I have the Noble S. This little nib is fun. I think this is a steel nib, though, I would think. Sorry, I'm going to mute myself again. Does it say 585 on it? I don't know. It says 44, I think. is. Does that say? No. It says practically nothing. I don't know. Hold on. Um, it doesn't say five eight five. To Denise D. Uh, yeah, actually, um, they like to. These are like the one forty nine is like the diplomat, like the diplomat pen, you know. So it's like they like to keep their colors consistent between black and gold. Um, with their other series, they ventured off, and like with the one forty six series, they've also ventured off um, with doing like the burgundy one forty six, mm-hmm. but. The only other colored 149 is the Blue Orient Express, which was like didn't even they didn't even advertise that pen, and you know barely anyone had that pen or was able to mm-hmm. get it. Um, but for the hundred year anniversary of the Meisterstück, they there are some pictures out online already. I'm waiting for my my uh, authorized dealer to also send me some pictures but they're doing a few 149s in like different colors or materials which is going to be oh, nice. that would be cool nice. i would love to see a white oh i don't gorgeous. think it'd be white yeah I, um yes you're right Montbuck is also not the same pen company that they were 20 years ago which is unfortunate because they you know expanded to leather goods and watches and stuff mm-hmm. which they're watches are amazing um i like their watches Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, is this what you were just talking about, Sid? What do you think they'll do for the anniversary? Different colored 149s, different material? Yeah, 149s. Um, and uh, a different design. I think I have a picture somewhere. Um, so would you say, generally speaking, if you're looking at modern Mont Blanc versus mm-hmm. some of the other pens that are available in the pen community, like a Pelican or an Omas or what else, a Pilot. Do you think it's Apple's, well, because so many people say you're just paying for the name brand. And would you say modern day is, is a little bit, or maybe not just paying for the name brand, but what do you think of that comment? Um, like, like, are they comparable? Like, you know? Uh, I guess our Mont Blanc's worth it. Modern uh, Mont Blanc's worth the price. Uh, it depends on how, like, I would say uh, for a 149, like, I have never and probably will not buy a 149 at retail price from the store. Um, I don't think that it's necessarily fair to charge, you know, $1,000 for 
a, a black and gold. Great. Precious resin. Yeah, for the yeah. precious resin. Yeah, I think that um, 500, which is I sell that is uh, is is a fair price. You know, four 450 to 500. Mm -hmm. Um, but with the other pens, like the limited editions, like say this this Hadrian over here, like for me, I think that that would be worth it because I like like the design and everything like that. Um, and also like they put time into like the design and the materials and just little aspects of that that pen mm -hmm. but it's like what are you into also so that's a really subjective question but i, I would i understand it is but but i would say in my honest opinion i would not buy a 149 brand new from a store okay okay thank you thank you thank you um leanne i really do like the glacier blue it is a beautiful blue Actually, yeah. Sorry, I should uh, I should uh, reaffirm my statement. Um, what you said in the U.S., the Mont Blanc pens are even more overpriced. So yeah, they're a thousand dollars here, whereas you can buy some in Europe for like maybe eight hundred dollars or something like that, brand new. Yeah, but, it always costs more here. Like if you can find that deal, it's worth it, you know, because mm -hmm. you know box and papers and blah blah, blah and it'll be nice. But mm -hmm. a thousand dollars for for a simple pen is. Kind it's of. the precious resin, wherever yeah. they're mining that from. It's and I also rare. think that a lot of people in the community, you know, we value like different colors. Like I think one of the reasons Esterbrook is so popular, you know, it's it's the same pen with a steel nib, but there's so much thought into the marketing and the beautiful colors and the chatoyance of the, and there's so much to that. There's just a lot of personality. Involved. But if you just took the SD, I mean, even even the even the Raven that was black, the matte black, and it had the button piston fill, which was kind of fun, and the marketing was fun. But if you just had the SD just black with like a Mont Blanc with you know simple simple, it wouldn't be as I don't know that people would feel as connected to it. Yeah, so, no, for sure, for sure, and I think that that's why they offer some things like the uh bespoke program or like name exchange program and stuff but then it's like that becomes unaffordable but then it's crazy money yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. so I think that, but the thing is with Bong is i think that they know that they already have a uh a uh customer base and like a loyal fan base that will basically always buy and even if they're not even pen collectors it's like someone's buying a corporate gift or like something like that it's like right so, yeah, everyone's mind goes right to Mont Blanc. No, yeah. I, so I like, think we Montblanc. use it as a flex, you know? Yeah, and also Mont Blanc as a company is, and I, you know, went to the factory this summer and, you know, the museum as well and got the whole tour. And I was the only one on the tour, so I was asking uh, all the questions and everything. And um, basically, it seems like their thing is like, we're going to do what we want to do and our designers are going to do what they want to do. And you're either going to buy it or you're not. Mm. We're going to do it. Yeah. So they're not really like customer. They don't really the consumer, no. Trying to be the Hermes of fountain pens. Nice. Yeah. And then yeah. Yo says, you know, that precious resin is a bad translation of, I'm going to say it wrong, Edelhars. Edelhars. <laughs> Plastic. But, but honestly, I do get, I have found, not not to plug Yoast or anything here, but when this was on sale, I, I don't I don't I rarely see a Mont Blanc that I can purchase on sale. The Glacier is it the Duo? I don't have it with me right here, but it's got the the pretty cap and then just the resin body. That was at Nordstrom, eighteen or twenty percent off, and that was like the best price that I saw for. And it was like a day, Nord and then the next day they were gone. Nordstrom. That's where I got my glacier. I know they carried Mont Blanc. Yeah, but it was literally, I just happened to be on their website before Christmas and it was 20% off. And so I said, oh my gosh, like, cause I never saw it on sale, but Yoast is really the most affordable to, to get Mont Blancs if you're buying yeah, them. I, would say, I would say so, I would say so. I, uh, I just, you know, the only thing is that sometimes the customs, like customs will like stop your package. Oh, yeah. It or something but that's like doesn't usually happen but like yeah but mm -hmm. if you can't bump for european prices then it's definitely more worth it than american prices for sure so we'll just buy our mont blancs when we go to the dutch pen show yeah, um, totally. and the time 
I would say the European pen shows are, oh, well, particularly for U.S. sellers, um, I've experienced are not a place that you really make sales. That's a place where you really buy. So mm. I'm going for buying and buying and buying. Um, and I know, well, by the way, I know I kind of talk down a little bit on like Modern Mont Blanc right now, but <laughs> I still do love the company and I'm just comparing it to what they used to be. You know? I mean, I think that's fair. I don't, I mean, obviously you love Mont Blanc, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you're going to have your preferences and you work on them. You take them apart, you put them back together. You literally know them from the inside out and you know them through the decades from what you've seen and worked on. I think if anybody's qualified to speak to the quality of a pen, it's somebody who repairs them. I would Definitely agree. I would in agree. In my humble opinion. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, but yeah, so it's just like, they're just, years and years and years past what they used to be and it's it's sad but now they're more like a jack of all trades luxury brand than a pen company mm -hmm. okay you know yeah yeah well i am really so happy that i bought my first 149 from you sid i love it i'm glad i'm glad i that you're happy part with of it. my experience i always tell people how wonderful you are I know you always tell people because I actually have a lot of customers from you, so I also really oh. appreciate you for that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, you know, I, I don't just say it to say it. It was a really great experience. And I have to say the guy at Heinz Pens, I was like debating between one of his pens and a Mont Blanc. And he's like, if you want a Mont Blanc, go see Sid. Like he sent me away <laughs> from his table, <laughs> you know, which I thought was so nice. And then he's like, this guy over here is going to tell you everything you need to know about Mont Blancs. And it was it was a great experience. Oh, Yost um, has a very important question. Uh, for um, for modern, all right. So I'm going to put this in two categories: modern and vintage. Okay. So for vintage, I would say a 139, no doubt, hundred percent, no doubt. Wow! And, and with such conviction, he said that. <laughs> and then for modern, I would say I really like the 1912. Okay, 139 and the 1912. Um, Wills, did you hear that? <laughs> or, 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 or big, like really huge pens than the 1914, which I would like, but. I'm very excited. Two pens think, from Yost. Yeah. I, think Yost, I think Yost will hook us up with those pens. I think that can happen. I think that's why he's asking. I think that's why he's asking. He wants to give Because when we get to the Dutch pen show, he wants to have <laughs> a wrapped gift on our hotel room I, bed. Yes. And I he just, just wants to make sure he has the right Mont Blanc for each of us. Yes. Yoast, you're so kind. <laughs> he's just such a sweetheart. <laughs> baby. Say, Elizabeth Taylor for the nest of the baby. Wow. <laughs> such a baby. I like Taylor. Oh my gosh. Taylor a lot, actually. Um, we were talking about the door knocker thing. Yeah, what's the, deal with we the, the door knocker thing? Is that supposed to represent something about her? Or? Blue velvet? I have no idea about Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah, she was, she was very beautiful. I know I that. I see more about the Hadrian than I can about, you know, like. Tell the, us about that one. Tell us about the Hadrian. Yeah. Um, okay, I also owe oh, her ring. Her, her ring. Oh, okay. Well, that, okay. It looks like a door knocker to me, so. But. Okay. Um, so this is Pompon Hadrian. So he was a Roman emperor, right? Yeah. Hadrian? Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah. General or emperor and general, I think. Yeah. I thought he was saying, yo, Adrian. No, joking. Yo, Adrian. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, look at that clip. <laughs> Patron of the arts. Um, so. Wow. Oh, oh is that Medusa? Medusa. <laughs> You think it was a Versace pen. Right. And uh, I really like, so I like hefty pens, so I really like the weight on this pen. That's and uh, uh, the I, can't really, I can't really show the material, but it like basically looks like, like a, like a, Is it metal? like a marble. Mm. Oh, like okay. very dark. And, Let's see the uh, snow cap. <laughs> That's like my, I just, that one's pretty. Um, and then on the, uh, on the uh, clip, like over here, it says some some stuff in Latin. Wow. Oh, oh good night, Yost. Good, good night. night. Sleep good tight. Night, Yost. Yeah, he's several hours ahead of us. Thank you for yes. thanks for stopping by and yes, getting our mom so request. <laughs> that is beautiful. That do you have that? What do you think of the 007 pen? I've seen that in a couple shows. 
Oh, good to know, Yost. Oh, the, the podcast is back. We've missed it, Yost. Yeah. I do that like. That seems cool, too. Uh, it does look like a Versace pen. Yeah. So is that one that you got from your friend or you're bringing to your friend to Chicago? No, no. He So Osman does not deal in anything after the 1960s. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is not a fan of modern Mont Blanc at all. Wow. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, no. So this is just from my own personal collection. Um, well, not personal collection, but my personal inventory. Um, and I bought this from a collection that someone was selling. What was the most recent Mont Blanc you acquired for your own collection? What's the most one to join? Uh, a very, very nice one. A very special one. Um, this is fun for me. This is really fun. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I just like to nerd out. So, you know, it's 9 a.m. Central. What time? Let me write that down. Uh, it's this. 9 a.m. Central. Yeah, it's like early. So. Uh, um, yeah, so I got this uh, mint condition. Uh, Mont Blanc 128. So this is the predecessor to the 139. So this is from uh, the early 1930s. Wow. Oh, how beautiful. Did and you show another pen that had a clip similar to that? Yeah, yeah. So this is a characteristic of the the age. Okay. And I do uh, love that flat top. And that it's yeah, flat tops are my favorite. Pretty. Absolute favorite. And so basically, this is different because before they had piston, they had push button. So to fill oh, it. Oh, nice. To fill yeah. it, like you know. Very nice. And then the nib is just absolutely beautiful, and it's a nice extra fine. I love the bicolor. Me too. It's so pretty. Uh, well, that is mint. That looks gorgeous from here. Yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful. And then another one that I got was this is not the same forty five as the other forty five that I was talking about, but this is like a hard rubber. Um, mm -hmm. Number forty five, and the star is one of the. Big one. Oh, I love that. I like that. That yeah, that's kind of so I know yes. The so baby retro. was trying to and the nib is a uh, oblique broad. So which nibs have had the heart in it? Because I noticed that my Greta Garbo has the heart in the nib as well. The, the heart on modern pens is just a, a design for them. Mm -hmm. Um on the vintage pens, um most pre most non one twenty eight or one three nine or one three X lines. Most so not the one two X and the one three X series do not have the hearts. And then anything before that series, so probably nineteen thirty five and before will have a heart. Hmm. Okay. That is good to know. I guess the important question is if you can buy from Sid outside of a pen show for those of us who live in no man's land like Massachusetts. Well, he's in New York, so it's not no man's land for him, Leanne, for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I do. Um, follow me on Instagram and we could always be in contact. Is that the best way? Because now we're, we're thank you so much for staying so long. I thought we only had you for 30 minutes. This was such a treat. I, I, I decided to extend it. My exams can wait. Oh. Oh, wow. Lucky I feel us. Special. This was such a treat. This was such a treat. Um, so what is the best way for people to reach you? Um, definitely on Instagram because I respond to my messages often. Okay. Um, All right. But in terms of uh, I will make this uh, known that I will respond to messages, but you know, if I take three or four days to send you a picture for a pen, I'm sorry. That's just, you know, that's kind of usually how it goes sometimes. I was so, actually saying but, that I had messaged you on Saturday and then it had said like, you know, it wasn't like he was on 15 minutes ago and he's not reading your DMs. Like you just were not on Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, this is fantastic because he's 24 and he's not on Instagram all the time. But then at the yeah. same time, I was like, I don't know if we, I don't know if we're going to have him because it was like a last minute ask on my end. Yeah, yeah. Vanessa had just bought her Boehm in I was like, oh, we should talk about our Mont Blanc collections. And then I was like, oh my God, I have to have, I have to call Sid. 
Yeah, you've got to have um, a specialist. On so it really worked out. But yeah, it was it was a couple of days, but it was it worked out fantastic. Yeah, so we, I'll, I'll basically it. It as soon as I can, as soon as I can. But um, yeah, so Instagram or in show at shows. Um, besides that, I don't usually give my number out, so I just yeah. That's fair. But, no, Instagram is no, fine. fine, and he is. I was like. And that, his um, right so, here is his uh, handle at penlover.medstudent. Penlover. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and also, also, I post a lot of my ads and pens on, uh, on virtual uh, pen show, the Instagram. So, oh, okay. Uh, That's good to know, too. Whenever you see like a lineup of Mont Blanc 149s, they're usually SIDS. Yeah, yeah. Well, not all of them because some people. I, I guess I've innovated this uh, ad design, so some people have been doing the same thing now. And I'm <laughs> but yes. anything with the, anything you see with the this red tray, that's me. This red the tray. Red tray is all right. Oh, red tray, you know. everybody. Now y'all know. You know. And I know. It's, oh, I just saw these, but these are. This is a Yardaled um, sterling silver uh, oh, pendant. So pencil. pretty. I bought. I really like the sterling yeah. silver. I mm -hmm. need a, I need a pen to, you know, that can write on normal paper sometimes. Of so course, right, occasionally. Yeah. What do you so, take your notes in for school? Are you on a laptop or do you handwrite your notes? I handwrite everything. I have handwrite Good. everything. Um, but I also, also that's how I study and remember. Same. Same. I feel like you Same just retain here. it better when you write it down. I th I think so too. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's, that's what I have for you guys today. And please reach wow. out if you guys have any questions or want to talk about more things. All right. This was fantastic. I this feel like we should wrap it treat. up just to be yeah. respectful because we'll just, just keep talking. Yeah. Thank you yeah, so no, much this has been for great. being here. Thank you for having me and uh, nice virtually meeting everyone in the comments. <laughs> section. I hope I give you guys some good information and please reach out if you guys, uh, if you need uh, any information. Yes, an expert and honest, and he will, you know, you will be happy with your product. It was fantastic. Good luck in all your studies, says Leanne. Thank you, all Leanne. Right. Thank you. What time is your exam tomorrow, or is it tonight? My tomorrow. My exam is on Friday. Okay. I just will be studying all week. <laughs> what is what is the con what is the subject matter? Uh, histology. <laughs> We'll leave it at that. Well, that's Thanks nice. so much. I learned a lot. Thanks for your time, Sid. All right. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye, Sid. Take care. Be good. Be Bye -bye. good. See you later. To loop. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you, guys. Oh, so oh you got a pen from him. And it was just wonderful. What a great guy, right? That was such a I treat. Mean, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Very oh, cool. it's blood. That's what his, that's what, thank you. Thank you okay, for Okay, because I was just like. Translation. <laughs> Okay. I hated histology. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was fantastic. Reach out to Sid if you need a Mont Blanc. And I'm I'm about to hang up and go see what 139 I need in my life. <laughs> 139 and 1912. Mm, that sounds that dangerous. Sense. Sounds dangerous. <laughs> I might get the Bohem first. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This was a two hour live stream. Yeah. And we really totally appreciate worth it though. Being. Totally worth it. Wait a time. second. Next week, Vanessa, do you want to share who's coming next week? Uh, do you want me to share it? Because oh, I know we have yes. a bunch of different you people. You share it. You share it. You share it. We just, have yeah. Daisy from Yoseka on the show next week. And I'm so excited. Um, I also realized, I said to Vanessa, we need to have more women on this yeah, show. We've had totally zero women as guests. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm so so excited to have Daisy here. So get ready to talk about Stationary Fest happening in yes. Brooklyn. I believe it's August 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's like a Wednesday yes. to a Friday. They just said that they have a thousand people who have registered. That is so awesome. For Stationary Fest. And then I was like, I literally blanked out. I said, Jay, do because he's I never see the credit card bill. I said, do did I register for Yoseka Stationery Fest? He goes, you don't know if you registered for a thing. I said, I really don't remember <laughs> if I bought my ticket yet. He's like, I don't think I saw any charges come through. And I was like, okay. oh my God, they have a thousand people. I better register. I won't be able to yeah. get in. 
Um, did you know, wait, does this say, wait a second. Did you already talk about the Juicy Broads pen show was mentioned in the latest Estherbrook? Oh, yeah. Vanessa, you can share stories. that. Yeah, I shared it to my stories because I was like, we're making it to the big time now, everybody. That Make was so an email. Nice. That was so nice that they put us in the yeah. newsletter. Have a great week, RG. Thank you so much. You should keep a journal, Lori, on, <laughs> on my uh, on my Mont Blancs. I hope they do stationary fest for 2025. Oh, I have a feeling they will. This seems to be like like a cannon. Like this just I like think it's going to be like very exploded. successful. I think yeah. it's going to be really exciting. So, um, Lori, you don't see the credit card bill. You're speaking my language. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> it is, for sure. I just get in trouble when certain charges are there. <laughs> All right, guys, we love you. Thank you so much. Stay juicy, bitches. Stay juicy, bitches. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Bye.